In this video, I'm going to talk about the value of freedom and how that relates to society and how free we really are on this planet at the moment. And I'm going to talk about the polarity between freedom and restriction. And I'm also going to touch on voluntarism and what that really means. And then also that in my view, if we raise our consciousness to a high enough level that the need for government would just fall away. And this is the second video in my video series about freedom. So make sure to watch part one if you haven't already to understand the fundamentals of what we're going to talk about today. So what I'm going to talk about first is freedom and restriction because it forms really the basis of what I'm going to talk about in this video with you. And it's important to understand this. So freedom and restriction is what you call a polarity. On the one hand, you have freedom. On the other hand, you have restriction. And you have many other polarities like light and dark, masculine, feminine, up and down, logical, emotional. These are all polarities. So when you look at freedom on the one hand, freedom is having the ability to do what you want to do and be who you want to be without initiating violence on other peaceful acting human beings and not hurting them. And then on the other hand, you have restriction. Restriction is this force in consciousness that puts boundaries around certain things. There are certain rules, certain boundaries, a restriction of the, let's say, limitless freedom that is consciousness. You could say this is the masculine principle, consciousness that is completely boundless. And then it gets bound by restriction to actually make matter because that's consciousness being restricted into matter, into a certain specific form. So we can make certain distinctions between, you know, another person and another person. If there was just limitless freedom, then there would be actually nothing. So from a higher perspective, restriction is very much needed and of course, freedom also, it's like so much linked without any restriction. There would also not be any real freedom. You would not really know what it is. And then on the other hand, what you really see in this world, and this is the really important thing to understand that we are at this moment as a collective, uh, there is this tendency for more and more control, more and more, you know, this, um, less freedom and more and more control in the name of safety, health, climate change, all the different narratives and reasons that they give to control society, to manipulate society. So in this game on planet Earth that we're all playing, you can clearly see that there are certain individuals that are higher up in society in terms of power and external authority, they are trying to control the others. They're trying to restrict freedom. And we are not truly free if this restriction comes from selfish gain and not really comes from an holistic understanding of, hey, we need to add certain boundaries here or certain restrictions here. But that doesn't have to come from this higher authority. We are our own authority. I know what I want to do with my life and what I want to do and who I want to be. And then that forms also certain boundaries. You don't let anybody just into your life. You have a boundary, right? You don't just take in any idea. You have a boundary and the boundary that we most likely all just need to understand, or I'm very hundred percent certain about this actually is the boundary that we should not initiate violence on other peaceful acting human beings. This is the essence of voluntarism. So if we don't initiate violence, we don't violate other people's boundaries. You do not try to control them, restrict them because on the inside ourselves, we are scared because if you look at these people that try to control the world, the elites or something like that, I would just call them the scared ones <laughs> because they are like a lower vibration. Maybe they have some material wealth, but they are not like in tune with the love in their heart. They're not connected to source. So they are a lower vibration. Otherwise you would not want to do these things at this moment. 
which is also, you know, it just happens. You know, there's the light principle and there's the dark principle and it's just a game of consciousness, a game, a game of God to experience this. So it's not right or wrong. However, because you are watching this, you are probably more on the side of freedom and you want to have a good life and you actually don't want to control other people that much. You don't want to do that. You want to build your own thing. You want to be creative and add value to the world. This is more, in a sense, this freedom polarity to do what you want to do and express what is really in your heart, what you really want to do to follow that impulse, that enthusiasm to express and to create because it is creation. We are creators. And when we have the freedom to create, we can create a beautiful world, but it is being more and more restricted by negative narratives, you know, organizations like the World Economic Forum that seed certain narratives of, oh, there's a great reset and uh, we all need to change society in a very drastic way. It's all just narratives that when you look into them, they lead to their selfish gain. They're not really narratives that are actually trying to help humanity, that are saying, wow, humanity, we are a strong species. We are connected to the essence of reality. We are creators. We are powerful beyond measure and therefore we can overcome any obstacle, any illness, any problem, any economic challenge. We can all add our own value and overcome this problem and when we have overcome it, it was such a great journey and a beautiful journey and how much have we learned? That's not the narrative. It's fair, 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 fair this, fair that, fair your neighbor, fair the climate change. Because when people are afraid, when people are afraid, they are much more inclined to go towards this paradigm of restriction, where there are, their freedoms are restricted in the trade of their freedom, because they get maybe some sense of security or a sense of, oh, these people are doing the best for me because we are not our own authority then people outsource this to other people and then like, oh, okay, oh, Trump, are you going to save us? Or, oh, Hillary or uh, Biden or Elon Musk or, oh, are you going to do it? Oh, look at him. He's like the savior. <laughs> but you are the person that is in charge of your own life. You are the authority right now in this moment. And when you realize that on a deeper level, then you don't have to give away, you know, your freedom towards restriction. There don't have to be these governments that control the rest. And this is a good segue into voluntarism. Voluntarism is that principle of where we as a human species have voluntary exchange between each other. Uh, there's one party here and one party here and there's a voluntary exchange of value. It's voluntary, it's not force. And this also ties into market capitalism, which if you let it completely free, the system organizes itself in supply and demand. And this is the best system for economic wealth because top down control, like for example, that they tried in communism and what they're trying to, in a sense, do again, you could call it technological communism, technocracy, where they're trying to control society from higher up. But this is top down control will never lead to the most effective solution or outcome for everybody. Because actually, as a human species, we are a self regulating organism. It's already inherently in there. But if other pieces of consciousness say to other pieces of consciousness or like other humans say to other humans, Hey, this is what you need to do. This is how we're going to plan it. Like in communism, well, we're going to plan the economy and this is what's going to happen. And then that doesn't work. The, the people in communist Russia, they were very poor. It was a very totalitarian government. I recently also saw, you know, certain politicians who were also growing up in the communist Russia times 
and uh, you know the, this propaganda was so heavy there so heavy so indoctrinating and we still have a lot of propaganda these days you know just like the media channels and the news so much propaganda but people just see it oh it's just the news <laughs> they're just telling us what what's really happening but they're telling it from certain angles and certain stories to see certain narratives inside your mind and then you talk to people and then they say all kinds of opinions and then you know this is from the news this is from the narratives that they have seeded because you can just look it up you know what they're trying to seed into consciousness so what i want to uh, touch on is also this uh, communism i was talking about that so they went to uh, at some point of course it, it disappeared but some of these politicians like I can remember I saw the story and then they went to a Western supermarket. <laughs> Western supermarket, there was so much food, oh my god, so much food. They must have been lying to us the whole time. Because there was so much food and the reason why that is, is because there is relative um, market capitalism. This will produce better goods and better services, there will be much more wealth. This is very important to understand, if we let go more, there will be more prosperity. But if governments try to control more, yeah, there will be le less prosperity. Because they think they know better, but actually the field, the connections between people, that is actually where it happens. You cannot govern that. Uh, the human mind cannot really comprehend that. Like all these small nuances and details, it just happens. Like a flock of birds that are flying through the sky. It just happens. It's spontaneous harmony, as they call it. And just to touch on that, like, okay, so you have this party A and party B, voluntary exchange, maybe party A can build a website, they can uh, also catch fish, maybe build a computer and the other party does other things. Maybe they can do marketing or maybe they produce bread or maybe they have some tomatoes and then there can be an exchange of these goods. And then also, of course, in this society, which is a smart thing to do, we have something that has a numeric value uh, that we can exchange because it's not always practical to exchange direct goods. So this is what we call money. So everybody knows when we have $1, it's a certain value. And when you have $100,000, that's another value. That's a higher value. So that's how we can exchange. And there doesn't have to be a third party in there in this mix <laughs> that says like, hey, uh, oh yeah, give me half of this exchange. Give me 30% of this exchange. Or you need to add some VAT tax, 20% on top of this, and then yeah, give that to us. It's a voluntary exchange. You are the owner and you are entitled to the fruit of your own labor. There doesn't have to be this third party. And the reason why that is the case is because it transitioned from kings and queens that basically just stole land in Okay, I'm going to take your land and then, okay, I'll give you some safety. But it was forced, you know, it's not like uh, that the farmers back then, they were very happy with this. But of course, they got some safety and also if they didn't give this, they would just be, be killed. That's like uh, how society used to function in those times, kings and queens, they just conquered the land. Now it's a little bit better, it's a little bit more covert also. But it's basically, in a sense, still the same principle. If you don't pay your taxes, then you at some point will go to jail. This is how it works, because taxation from the voluntarist perspective is actually stealing. And if you think about it, it's very obvious. It is stealing, because it's the initiation of violence on these Peaceful acting human beings, they're just peaceful. Hey, I uh, have this service, you have those goods, okay, we can exchange. And then there's another party that says like, hey, give us half of your money. <laughs> and if you really think that through, it's absolutely nuts. And the only reason why a lot of people believe in that paradigm is because we grow up in that paradigm. It's like you are this aquarium or, well, you're not the aquarium. In a sense, you are, you could say. Um, you are in an aquarium, you are this fish, and the only thing that you know is this aquarium. You're just in this aquarium, this box, this paradigm of reality, this is how it works. And then when you question that, it's very interesting what people say then at that moment. And I'm like, okay, uh, you know, uh, 
can you imagine that there is a society without the government? How will we do that? And then people are like, oh yeah, but who will build the roads? And uh, what about this? And what about healthcare? And what about uh, criminals and all these things? Yeah, okay, these are valid things to think about. However, the human spirit, you know, our imagination is limitless. We have airplanes flying through the sky right now. <laughs> you know, we have airplanes flying through the sky. Can you imagine? That was an idea at some point. I am recording this on a telephone. <laughs> Through the internet, I'm distributing this. You know, all these beautiful inventions. What can we create? But then people get stuck on, yeah, but who will build the roads? Well, the roads will get built when there is a demand for a certain road and somebody wants to build that road and they can provide the value because they're good at building roads and they maybe have some machines and then there will be people that will pay for that road. And it won't be a perfect world, you know, it's, I'm not saying that, oh, then uh, there will be absolutely no darkness and no problems, but we'll be a lot more free. <laughs> because when we are governed by this higher authority, then yeah, we're actually not free. And the problems will be solved because we collectively decide hey okay this is the better thing to do and then we will just come up with solutions and a famous example is also the slavery that was taking place in the United States because what the people in the south of the United States said when they had the slaves on the cotton fields and they had these uh, cotton uh, plants where they basically you have like people that pick the cotton and then they do certain things with that cotton, make clothes, they sell it. What they said was, who will pick the cotton? We cannot let these slaves go. Who will pick the cotton? It's impossible because yeah, we need these people and we need to have ownership over their life because who will pick the cotton? Who will pick the cotton? I mean, if nobody picks the cotton, then the business will go under, we can't survive. And there is, uh, not another solution for this and then at some point people realize well you know what this is just immoral it's unethical and this is also with government it's immoral and unethical if you really think it through it's not that it's right or wrong in a sense you know it just happens like reality it is what it is <laughs> but if we think about it in this way like oh it's just immoral we have to stop it we have to stop this 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 idea this principle let's just let it go what will then happen is that when you do that then the creative spirit will think of a solution and now they have machines to pick the cotton <laughs> they invented machines they have machines now and this is how it will also go when society as a large would let go of government there will be other solutions maybe we need some systems to organize. Maybe there has to be a lot more of this inner freedom that I talked about in part one, where people realize, okay, I am my own authority and I can actually contribute to society. And maybe there's some systems where you can actually contribute. Okay, do we need a road here? Do we need uh, this thing here? Are certain decisions being made? But everything is very transparent and you can see it. Because when everything is very transparent and everything is very much in the light, then also this dark aspect of restriction it it cannot like penetrate upwards because everything is just so much in the light it's just impossible and also people will just not feel the need or desire to give away their authority to these i don't know health experts and governments and politicians and certain very questionable billionaires like bill gates and all these people that oh yeah like they are the authority but they don't understand that these people, they go to certain, how can I say, avenues in society to then manipulate the rest for their own gain. <laughs> and that's also much more coming to light because that's the beautiful thing about being alive in this moment. It's also becoming much more, you know, in the light that this is happening. And that's also because consciousness is raising on the planet. However, they're trying to very much restrict it more and more and if we're not aware and conscious 
then a lot of bad things will happen. And the tendency or the way that it is going right now, then yeah, there will likely be a lot of countries that will experience some kind of technological totalitarianism where every single thing in your life is controlled, your thoughts, your emotions, everything that you do, your money through the central bank digital currencies, because they know they have so much data because you're on the internet and everything is, you know, these artificial intelligence algorithms and they know where you are and what you do, where you buy things, who you hang out with, what you do on the internet, what you say, what you don't say. And then they also want to put like these biological trackers on you so they can actually measure <laughs> your biology and then control it. And the reason why this is happening is that people are outsourcing their authority to these people and think like they know best. If you study these people and their ambitions, they are trying to crash the economy on purpose. And it's not like we have to fight anybody. This is the very, very important nuance. It just happens. And it's also a beautiful thing that it happens. Can you imagine a video game <laughs> or like a movie without any bad guys? It would be super boring. Nobody would watch it, nobody would play the game. It's like, oh, okay, well, it was always good and everything was always good. Okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, we're in a story, it's fun, it's exciting. And then, because you're watching this, you're probably more in team freedom. So let's build something beautiful, let's create, let's connect and see like, hey, what can we do? What can we do together? Because we are the love vibration, we are this inner freedom we are this vibration of freedom what can we create and this will always be a higher vibration than the fear and the control but if enough people believe in the propaganda and the media and the negative narratives and oh you're just like a insignificant little human that is polluting the planet and you're causing climate change and oh yeah like oh the economy crashed and oh no let's bring in central bank digital currencies which they're already working on and then okay you need to have a big problem then you can implement this solution and then they want to control your money that if you say your wrong thing on the internet or uh, support the wrong party or do something Oh, they can just say like, oh, hey, sorry, we saw this and uh, we'll take some money off your bank account. Don't do it again. Uh, you'll not be able to buy food or, you know, the food will just be so much more expensive for you than for somebody else. That's like a pain pleasure mechanism. Oh, it becomes so expensive for you because you're saying naughty things about the government or saying naughty, naughty things. Oh, that's not allowed because uh, of, oh, now you're causing more climate change or now you're causing... Uh, more sickness to spread or something like that because they always try to use the good for the bad because it can't be any other way because most people are good most people want to do good so this is what people need to see that the darkness will always mask itself as the light in order to impose more and more control in order to impose more of this restriction to further you know, the consciousness of the empire, this relentless pursuit of control and domination at all costs and profit at all costs. It's like a certain consciousness. And then we are the other side, which is also fun. We could also not exist without this other side also existing. The only thing is we are conscious creators. What do we want to create in this world from this moment on? Just sit with that for, for a second. What do you want to create in this world from this moment on? What do you want to create in this world from this moment on? Not in reaction. Just observing and seeing the beauty also in the darkness and the restriction and the control. And then saying, you know, that's good. I'm not going to react to that. Uh, I'm just going to observe it. I'm honoring it. I also see the value in it. 
because if those things were not there and were not happening, there will not be a lot of other people that are now motivated to speak up or to make the world a better place <laughs> because that's how it works. It has benefits. It also has a lot of drawbacks, by the way, <laughs> in this world. You don't want to uh, become a prisoner in a technological totalitarian system where the system is set up entirely against you and you are being controlled to the fullest because it's very hard to escape from that system at that point. At the moment where we are right now, there is still very much relative freedom so you can do certain things which is really important if you are stuck in you know for example in china in a social credit system it's already a lot harder <laughs> not impossible it doesn't really matter but to become more aware of it right now is much better than becoming aware of it when you are already locked up in a coffin uh, like a coffin apartment which i saw recently like a small like little apartment that's the size of a coffin with your uh virtual reality glasses so far down the rabbit hole of being fed so much lies so much literally then in the matrix we can escape the matrix right now and you will always be able to go back i mean the essence is love and freedom and truth so you can always go back, but yeah, some people will go so far that it will be very, very difficult for them. So just to go back to voluntarism and this voluntary exchange and also this idea that I want to touch on, uh, which is polarity. Because in this society, what you see a lot is there's a lot of division between uh, different groups. Black versus white. You have uh, the LGBTQ community against maybe the conservatives. And you see it also on the internet, you know, maybe it's like the red pill community against the feminists. Or it's uh, the conservatives versus the liberals. The people that are for birth control and people who are against. All these divisions, all these divisions in consciousness, in humanity, that are fighting because they are so much stuck in a certain polarity and a polarity is what I explained earlier like light and dark masculine and feminine but it also works in this way you know LGBTQ and uh, conservatives and the red pill community and feminists and the beautiful thing that we will have to realize to make this world really a more peaceful and free place is that the one polarity could not exist without the other polarity and yeah they are bashing the other polarity and saying it's wrong but <laughs> the funny nuance is like it could not even exist without the other polarity they basically have entire podcasts and entire i don't know written books because the other polarity exists and they want to be the other polarity <laughs> it's actually quite funny if you think about it so can we honor the other polarity because it also has certain benefits it also has certain truths can we see it also as a valuable piece of consciousness and then also we can stand for our own polarity, but can we see the, the other point, points of view? And then if the other party also does this, hey, I can also see your point of view and look at the drawbacks and um, positive elements of this argument and the drawbacks and positive elements of this argument. And then if we are our own authority and more free on the inside, it's like, oh wow, both sides are beautiful, this one, this one, and then you will just feel more an impulse. You know what, you know, I feel more inclined to this and uh, I'm going more this direction and I honor what you're saying and that's also good. I mean, I don't agree that this is maybe like the best way forward right now because of this, this and this, but it's an objective, non-dual, depolarized view. And then even if the other person decides, oh, I want to go that direction, I want to do this. Well, they can, like let them free. Like if somebody is a Christian and they meet somebody who is doing Islam, you know, the Christian can just say like, okay, well, you can do Islam, it's good. And then can the person that is Christian just then just say like, oh, I really feel this polarity in my side myself. Like, okay, well, then go and express that. Go and show the benefits. Go and inspire other people to also do that or maybe to transcend even these things. Oh, can you make it spirituality? Can we bring it even more fundamental? We are creators. 
This is a dualistic reality that we live in. But we can always bring and depolarize the different polar opposites and then unite them because there are only half-truths and all paradoxes will be reconciled. This is a famous quote from the book called The Kibalion. And this is the truth because it is like yin and yang. You have light and you have dark. And then, well, yeah, like, is the yin better than the yang? It's like... <laughs> And we are actually swimming in this ocean of energy. When you are interacting with other people, then you will notice that there is always this current of energy that is flowing between you and the other person. And the one moment you are the yin and the other moment you are the yang. And when a person says something, a certain opinion or a certain a view on the reality, hey, we should do it this way, then the other person also uh, can become inclined. Hey, but this is the other side. Or... Maybe they agree with them. There's always this, this ebb and flow. Just to give a couple practical examples. And then I'll tie that back to society. Why this is important. And that will also lead to. That we can even have a voluntaristic society. Where there is peace and freedom. And we will not harm other peaceful acting human beings. And try to control them in subtle ways. Okay so we're going to look at a couple different polarities. And on the one hand, maybe somebody that believes that personality is fixed. You are who you are. And the most important thing in life is to be yourself. Be yourself and embody that completely. And yes, if you look through certain lenses, for example, astrology, if you also look at astrology through a certain lens, yeah, you are certain energies together and you are a certain energy. You are a certain person. Be yourself. This is very important, very valuable to honor yourself and to express yourself in the way that you are and not conform to what other people think that you need to be. Be who you want to be, or be who you are. And I'm talking more than about the essence, personality is fixed. So, okay, uh, this is just who I am. That's maybe even more the polarity that I'm talking about. Oh, this is who I am. This is who I am. And then stand for that. Yeah, that's certain benefits, but also certain drawbacks. So let's look at the other side of the argument, which is personality is completely changeable. Completely changeable. You can just change anything about yourself at any moment. If you are introvert, you become, can become extroverted by just doing certain practices, putting yourself out there a lot. You can just uh, become more extroverted. So let's say you are an introvert and you... So on the one hand, you maybe have somebody that is introvert, they can become extroverted just by doing certain practices or putting themselves out there. Or maybe somebody who is logical and looks at science and is more logical minded, they're more rational, they can become more emotional and more intuitive and get in touch with their spirituality and their heart and their own feelings. And then maybe somebody who is very intuitive, they can just say at a certain moment, hey, you know, I see the benefit and also rational thinking, which is something that you see a lot. People that do a lot of spirituality and get into law of attraction or energy. And then at some moment you'll realize, oh, okay, they're just only this intuition. And yeah, if you try to talk with them about rational thoughts or something, then that doesn't, uh, that doesn't register. But like, oh, you can just switch. You can, your personality is changeable. So these are two different viewpoints. That's what I'm trying to get at. And let's say now you're talking with somebody who has this viewpoint, personality is fixed, and you're more in the polarity of personality is completely changeable. Then now if this person says, yeah, personality is completely fixed. Yeah, this is like very important, this or that. Then the reaction often when you're not uh, aware enough, what will happen is that uh, there will be a reaction. Yeah, but uh, personality is also very changeable. And it's like you can change anything about yourself in an instant. And I used to be introvert and now I'm extrovert. So it's, uh, it's actually this side that is true. And this person says, no, it's actually this side that is true. So can you see that there's like a clash? There's a clash that happens. And the reason why the clash happens, and this is just a, you know, a simple, simple example. I'll give a couple other examples. The clash happens because the one person can't see the benefits of the other person's viewpoint. And the beautiful thing is that we can actually learn to appreciate also the benefits of the other side and be open-minded to both sides. There's no, in a sense, 
absolute truths. And that's also polarity funny, you know, there is also absolute truths and relative truths, also <laughs> a polarity. So can you see both sides? But uh, just to keep it simple, um, yeah, they're like, oh, okay, can you see the other person's side? And then both people in this energetic feeling that they have, they will be more depolarized. And what I'm talking about is not only a mental thing, you'll feel it in your body, it's an energetic. And that's because we are swimming in this ocean of energy that is, well, communicating with each other. And it's constantly in relationship because we are the quantum field, we are consciousness, we are God. This field of love and vibration that is constantly interacting. And there can only be a communication in a sense between certain polarities, but it doesn't have to be this fixed, tight polarity where there's like a clash, a polarity clash, you could say. There can also be much more harmony. Hey, wow, I see your viewpoint, I see mine. Oh, I see the drawbacks also in my own polarity. Oh, I see the drawbacks in yours. Well, okay, you know what? At this moment, I feel more inclined to explore this polarity because it makes sense for my growth. And well, you explore that polarity and maybe the other person is even like, wow, okay, I learned actually something from you. That's very valuable. Wow, that's awesome. Let's, oh, I actually want to also explore that polarity. That's really beautiful. Because this is also what happens if you're conscious of it. Other people are in a sense um, trying to teach you something, but often they're also not aware of it. Like they just come into your life and then it's like, oh, there's like this other polarity. So let's just give, a couple other examples and then I'll tie it back into uh, society and why this is really important. So yeah, I already said like, oh, rational and uh, emotional. So somebody is more of like the belief, oh, okay, uh, science and rational thought and then you can transcend these like uh, deceptive emotions because people are run by their emotions a lot. And then other people say like, oh yeah, but the emotions, like they're so important and they're my compass to uh, navigate the world and I listen to my deep intuition and I don't want to listen to the mind and the thoughts. Okay, you see, this is also polarity. So, oh, then you can learn something from the other person. Well, okay, beautiful. <laughs> and that's how you grow. That's how you grow and also transcend polarity. And they also use this to control people. I want to tie it into that. So they control it. Uh, they use it to control people. Basically, oh, on the one hand, there's like this LGBTQ and then the other hand, it's like the conservatives. Can the conservatives see that maybe the LGBTQ community has certain positive aspects, hey, more freedom and respect for other people who are different. And then maybe the LGBTQ community could see like, hey, the conservatives, certain traditional values, certain also important things. Oh, they're also maybe important. And the interesting nuance with this uh, LGBTQ community, anybody can do what they want, anybody can be who they want to be and do what they want to do, that is important. But a lot of it is also now purposely being created as this woke culture where there's actually a lot of what I said before, the, the good is being used for the bad. Everybody can be free and do what they want, but they're confusing genders a lot. They're confusing little kids a lot. Oh, are you maybe pansexual or trisexual or maybe like a giraffe or a, a dolphin or LGBTQ X, Y, Z, sapiosexual, transsexual, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's so many different divisions. A boy is a boy, a girl is a girl. You can keep it really simple. This is more the conservative aspect. And then of course, like anybody can do what they want, but it's purposely being seated to create confusion, to create, oh, people are so confused and then confused people are easy to control because then you say to them, oh, okay, well, this is uh, the solution. And then on top of that, the big pharma, and you know, uh, you know, this kind of like aspect of reality is also making a lot of money on it. They're selling all these hormone uh, enhancers or replacers. And then also the surgeries that are really traumatizing a lot of people. So this is also a polarity, a division. And you can also see this in the black versus the whites. Yeah, of course, the whites did a lot of bad things in a sense in the past. But yeah, is it really that black and white? <laughs> they use this narrative to maybe, you know, Black Lives Matters and all these things. It's like a 
certain sense a psyop to put blacks into a victim position. So what happens then? This polarity becomes more and more enraged and more and more uh, activated, more and more triggered. And then what happens? Boom, you have clashes between people because if you divide the people, you can conquer them. It's a very old concept of how you can control societies. And this is how they do it, through polarity. So if everybody could just see like, hey, I am stuck in this polarity, I am stuck in this identity, this character that is built up of all kinds of narratives and stories that I have created for myself. And now they are actually trying to manipulate the polarities that I am in so that they yeah, basically play the chessboard. So when you can transcend these polarities, then you can be really free. <laughs> Because if you're stuck in these polarities, then they control you. If you see Trump on the television and you get like, yeah, this is Trump, oh yeah, this is like the best guy, he's going to do it. And then you see Hillary, he's like, no, she's a fucking bitch and a demon and blah, blah, blah. You are polarized. You can have like an objective opinion about any of these people, but if you are polarized, they by default control you because I can promise you that all these people and the narratives that they see in the media, it's not like they're just doing it randomly. <laughs> a lot of people think they get like their own opinions from these things, but it's not like they're, it's just being seeded. Also like this, all this LGBTQ uh, woke uh, thing, you know, they just seeded it into society through the universities. Okay, like certain professors that then get more money and more research and then boom, 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 and all these things trickle down and now it's like a, a common thing. And don't get me wrong, by the way, like I'm talking about anybody can do what they want to do and be who they want to be. But the thing is, actually, a lot of these people, without knowing it, they're being controlled. They're being manipulated into this polarity. <laughs> and... When they can transcend it, they can more authentically look, okay, is this like polarity that I uh, identify like this? Is that actually coming from love? Do I actually feel that? Or do they actually feel, you know, that they want to become a woman or become a man or whatever? Ch actually change gender, like the gender that you were born with. Like this is saying like, oh, creation is wrong. Like you were born in this uh, this way and... Is there really not a certain trauma or a certain fear response there that is creating this? Like a body dysmorphia, like, oh, I don't feel good, I don't feel good enough. And like, oh, maybe if I do this thing, then I feel better. Because, yeah, it's just narratives that are being seeded. These are just beliefs and paradigms. So can you let that go and then see like, oh, what is really the truth? And then if you still feel that way, anybody can do what they want to do. Total freedom. That's really beautiful. But when you can transcend these polarities and also, you know, what I talked about earlier, these viewpoints of, oh, personality is fixed or not, and uh, you're more rational and you're more emotional and, oh, this is really better than the other. No, it's like, it both has like benefits and drawbacks. Can we depolarize? Can we transcend polarity? Because at that moment, we can truly create this voluntaristic society where we interact with other peaceful human beings and then see like, hey, you are in these polarities. Wow, that's beautiful. You are in this one. Wow, that's also beautiful. Well, I am in these ones. I think if we would do business together or do this, I think maybe we should do the marketing in this way. Maybe we should do the products in this way. Or maybe we should organize the law system in this way or that schooling system, or I could say, uh, which is a better term, learning centers where people can learn and express themselves and creative centers where people can be creative <laughs> where this is really like a, a beautiful thing where people are inspired to learn about themselves and the world and the people and then how do we organize that well different polarities different points of view, oh, maybe we should do this and this and this. Oh, well, maybe this is the best way to go now from a true place of wisdom and a true place of not having conflicts, seeing the other person's side. Can you imagine if everybody would do that? Oh, I can see your side, I can see my side. 
wow, what do we actually feel inspired to do right now? Okay, well, you know what? Also, I feel inspired to build this in this area of the world and you feel inspired to build that in that area of the world. Well, that's totally fine. You can do what you want to do there. We're going to do what we want to do here and then let's just see. Okay, maybe this one turns out to be the best. Maybe this turns out to be the best or yeah, we just want a different life. We just want to do it in that way. You want to do it in that way and that's fine. Imagine if everybody would do that, what would be the next level of humanity? Because if everybody would do that on a conscious level in their own relationships, you would not need a government because we are our own authority. You would not need an external, I don't know, like other pieces of consciousness that say to other pieces of consciousness, hey, this is what you need to do. And otherwise, if you don't pay the taxes, you go to jail. Or if you don't wear the mask, you get a fine. If you don't take a certain medical procedure that we all know about, you cannot travel. Can you imagine? How could we go that far that, that, that they could violate bodily autonomy so that you get something back that is already yours? Your freedom, your God-given right. But the reason why we give it away so easily is not, it's not developed enough. What I'm talking about, these practices, becoming more aware of freedom and what it really is. And then we can go to the next level of humanity, the next level of society to really transcend this. And it starts with your own inner world and the daily interactions that you have with other people. That's a beautiful thing. If we all do that, if enough people do that, become more depolarized, then you could have a society without a government because it would already be harmonious, much more harmonious. People would just have this spontaneous harmony. It would be heaven on earth, in a sense. And I am not saying that this would be perfect, by the way. There would still be problems. There would still be pain and hurt and fear. And there would still be a lot of things, but it would be a lot better than we have now. That's just the next level for us like to grow towards. And it's fun. It's also okay that the world is as it is right now. It just happens. It's, it's okay. And let me just check my notes for a second. If I forgot something. Yeah, I think I touched on all the subjects. So experiment in your own life with this. Because freedom really starts with you, yourself. How you practice it on a daily basis and how you let other people free to explore the polarities that they feel inspired to explore. That they are inspired to be this type of person or do these types of things. You, you let them do that because it also has benefits for you if you really look at it objectively. And it also has maybe certain drawbacks how you see the world. And then you can learn from the other points of view. And then if the other person also does that. For you, like, oh, they can see your positive side. Then, wow, okay, it's like you inspire each other. And then you learn and, oh, I can integrate something from this. Integrate something from my own. And that's how you grow. And then that raises consciousness. And when we raise consciousness, more people will be free on the inside. Have this real inner freedom. And then that will translate into having a more free society. Where a government and the need for that would just fall away. It just wouldn't be any, it wouldn't be necessary. It just, it's not necessary at the moment, I would say in a certain sense, but it's just a level. Like, where can we go? It would just not make any sense anymore if we would all do that because we are our own authorities. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video, in this video series about freedom and society. If you have any questions, then just leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure to check them out and answer them. And then also, if you like this video, make sure to like it. That really helps. And then also subscribe. And there will probably be some kind of opt-in for a newsletter down here or a free giveaway. And also, if you want to check out the other videos of this video series, you can also find them on my channel and also in the description below. And that's all for this video. And have a great day.